Welcome to the Up and Up podcast with another resource in our community to serve your needs. Today, we have Jeremy here with Curtain Call to talk a little bit about what they do with productions. And you do that uh, mainly at IUK or do you do that out in different areas in the community? Well, we have our Curtain Call studio over on North Armstrong Street, and we do some smaller shows there, but most of our big main stage shows are done at Havens now. Oh, yeah, because they've got the technology, they've got the stage, they've got the big, backdrops. Big stage, big audience. It's it's great. I've a, been at some of those productions, and they're amazing. Yeah, we just uh, we broke a whole bunch of records this summer with our production of Mary Poppins. <laughs> yes. Um, we were the first group to fly. Um, in in Haven's Auditorium, um, we had the largest audience that Curtain Calls ever had in their history of 22 years, and um, yeah, it was it was amazing. I think that is great. And Curtain Call is basically kids on stage, yeah, performing. We're a, yeah, we're a theater for children, which is a little bit different than most people think that we're a children's theater and only include uh, children, but. We're a theater for children, so our goal is to really create some family-friendly uh, productions. Mm -hmm. uh, back when Curtain Call started, uh, one of their missions, one of their things they did was to include families on stage. Yes. So it's it's really cool. We had, uh, for, for example, this past summer in Mary Poppins, we had a family. Uh, we had... Um, like three generations Ooh, of family of on performers. stage. Yes. It, it was amazing. Um, our fall production of SpongeBob, we have a, <laughs> a grandmother and a granddaughter on stage. It's so we're really here about, you know, creating an atmosphere of family friendly entertainment. Um, and most of our performers, like for the fall, SpongeBob, most of our performers are um, ages eight to eighteen. But we have a few adults that came and joined that came and joined us for SpongeBob. So it's really exciting. I think that's great. And you know, uh, when you are doing a production, there's different characters, and so some are going to be adults in that the parent piece, right. um, especially when you're talking about. Um, different productions. Yeah. So, but I have seen um, Scrooge, you yep. know, you did mm -hmm. the Bah Humbug. That's right. Um, and that was a wonderful production. I took my grandkids there. Uh, they loved it. That's right. Um, and I love theater. Um, I just love productions. So I think it's pretty cool um, that we've got such talented youth in yeah. our community. And being that I represent a youth organization, I think it's cool to really bring up the younger yep. generation in theater and drama and kind of get them going on a path you yep. know they could be the next broadway star that's right we have a lot of uh, seniors right now who are looking to uh, go to college and major in musical theater Woo! and so that's amazing like they're that's their plan and they're they're really seeking out different uh, colleges and universities all over the country to kind of go and, and continue their, their journey on the musical theater path. See, and, I think that's cool. And yeah. you get to go and kind of experiment with a career mm -hmm. and see if this is really for you. Yeah. And so uh, I kind of think about some of the families out there that, you know, their children may have not had an opportunity mm -hmm. um, to perform in a production right. or even go out for a casting call. Right. Well, so in Howard County, we have five schools um, and not all of those schools have a theater program. Okay. You have some, you have some schools that um, are really doing well and are starting to build programs. And then you have other schools that are kind of tinkering with the idea of building a theater program. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're training some of those students to go into those schools to kind of help kind of ignite that. Um, you know, you, you have a really strong theater program out at Northwestern. Kokomo has a pretty strong program. I was just there at their, uh, this their fall production of Clue. It was amazing. Yes. And we share a lot of those students. Eastern has a pretty phenomenal yes, theater program. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I hear Taylor's working on building one now. So good. we have good, good things out there. Um, Western's working on a theater program. So it's kind of nice to start seeing these theater programs uh, starting to ignite in those schools. And, mm -hmm. and I'd like to say that Curtain Call has some part in that because some of those, we've had students from all of those schools uh, participating in our program and so they're coming out and they're just really we kind of share the wealth there because we're all doing the training and they're getting the experience and so it's a it's a wonderful extension of of schools and and uh, 
I think that's really great because, yeah. you know, um, schools can't major in everything. Right. Um, and that's kind of where we come from, Kokomo Urban Outreach. What's went to the wayside that we feel is valuable and um, teaching life skills like yeah. what you're teaching yeah. uh, is important. Um, I think about the life skill of showing up on time, uh, getting your practices in, making sure you understand what you're required to do, yeah. um, being disciplined enough to yeah. get the job done. Um, th those are big things. Yeah, big commitment. Theater is a, is a huge commitment. And depending on what your role is in the show, you know, if you're if you're a lead in the show, then you're required to be there almost every rehearsal. But if you're an ensemble member, then there's some more flexibility there until we get to like the week of the show where we're trying to pull all the things together. So mm -hmm. it's been a learning experience. Some uh, some have done a really nice job with it, and others it's been a it's been a learning experience for them. So no, that's good, and I yeah. think you're teaching them those skills of discipline and showing up on time and being prepared. So um, I love that fact, and that's really the reason why we wanted you on the yeah. show is you're you. really helping the youth of this community kind of find themselves, if yeah. you will. And I just encourage families out there that listen, um, you know, your kid may be a theater kid. And, um, and you know what, we want to just encourage that. Yeah. And um, how do they actually show up? How do we find out about casting calls? Um, the best way to keep uh, keep in touch and what we're doing is to kind of follow us on social media. We have Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. We also have our website at kcctc.org. Um, we try to put all the things there. Yeah. Um, you know, we just cast our our production of A Christmas Carol coming up in December. But uh, December 16th, that's our, our casting call for Finding Nemo Jr. That's coming up this spring. Ooh, yes. um, that's for ages 8 to 18. So it's going to be uh, pretty much focused on elementary, middle school, and high school students. And that's being directed by one of our board members, Susie Regal. And so that's going to be a really, a really amazing. I think that is super cool. I mean, Nemo, who's the blue yeah, Dory. fish? Dory. Just keeps swimming. Yeah, right? keeps that's swimming. What, yeah, that's and what it's I feel like, like I do here. In and she speaks swimming. languages, right? Yeah, she to, speaks whale. Yeah, it's like yeah. Woo -dee -woo. that's right. Woo -dee -woo. Just, just like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I could do yeah, it. I, think you could, yeah. I might be her. <laughs> I, I think Ellen DeGeneres yep, Ellen did DeGeneres that one. That in the, in the and movie. so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I could. oh, it's gonna I be a great fun. show. And the a show is is actually written when I read the show. Um, it's it's really it's written very closely to the storyline of the Disney show, so it's it's gonna be really fun. Um, that's Finding Nemo Jr. and the auditions are December sixteenth, and then our show. I had to celebrate my birthday during the show, March yes. March fifteenth and sixteenth, twenty twenty four at Haven's Auditorium. Yay! So it's gonna be a great show, and then uh, we have our big summer show that we try to do our uh, curtain call alumni, family, and friends, and that's kind of opened up to usually open up to ages six on up to however old we want to go. We, yeah. Uh, for Mary Poppins, like I said, we had ages I think six to seventy two or something like yes, that. So yes, yes. Because you had the uncle and yeah, yeah you had, had all kinds all, of different kinds people of that you have for, to cast. So yeah. uh, if you are interested in being a cast member and you're interested in theater, no matter matter what your age is right. um go out to the curtain call facebook page facebook, yeah, um call, yeah. yeah go to the curtain call website and check it out i think some of these um shows coming up the christmas carol um you guys did bah humbug one year which was yep. amazing yep. i just I, I can't believe when i sit there in the theater and watch those kids sing the songs watch those mm -hmm. kids do the dances yeah. um and perform and you're talking about an, a, a two hour production yeah. with kind of an, uh, a space in between and they've got to memorize all those lines. All those and lines, woo. all those songs, yeah. And, and we just keep uh, making, we just keep setting the bar. Like every show we set the bar a little bit higher and so that's that's been something amazing that uh, we keep working on. Uh, we've put together an amazing team of volunteers. You know, I have a, the Curtain Call has an executive board of 11 people who come that's on. Awesome. We have a, a new grant writer coming on board to just help us find some funding. Um, you know, I took over right at COVID time as the executive director it was February 2020 um, wow. they needed uh, they were kind of in a transition time and they asked me to come on board and I'm like yes I'll come on board and then COVID hit and then it was and then it was okay well we've always used community space we've always used Kokomo schools or churches yes. local churches in the yeah. community and it was one of those things when COVID hit we're like okay what do we do now we have to 
we have to figure out how to exist in the world of COVID. Um, and so we had a, a member in the community who purchased a building for us over on North Armstrong Street. Wow. And we're getting ready. We've, we've, we've worked hard the last three years and we're getting ready to buy that building, I think, oh, and uh, make good. sure that we have a permanent home for Curtain Call. That's been kind of my, my uh, uh, mission here as the executive director. We mm -hmm. need to have a place to call home to continue to build our legacy in the community. Um, so that building will become, hopefully, really soon in the next uh, few months, will become home to Curtain Call Studio. That's what That's we call great. it. Yes. The Curtain Call Studio. We've done all most all our rehearsals there. We've done several smaller shows in that space. A Christmas Carol coming up in December. Um, that will be done in that space. Wonderful. Um, all of our yeah. auditions. We've started some classes. We have a couple other board members, Michael and Amanda Marvin, who, yes. who have uh, taken the lead to start some classes for us. We just finished up an improv class this fall. So we're hoping to, to begin to also offer those workshops and classes to train up a little bit different than just, just productions because there's more to productions. And, and when you're in a production, you don't necessarily have the time to uh, fine tune those skills. So we really want to have those classes to start fine tuning and, and building up on the skills that we learned for production and only make us better and yes. have a better performers. So that's one thing. Um, we're also looking for community partners, other nonprofit organizations to really start coming together to start working on a collaborative, uh, big project. I really feel we need a community school of the arts here in Kokomo. Ooh, nice. I really feel we need a performing arts center in Kokomo. So those are some of our big, big, big lofty goals, goals, right? That we would yes. like to see in the next five to 10 years. And, mm -hmm. and someone has to lead the way for that. So yes. why not? That's right? it. Why Absolutely. Not, why not lead the way for that? So, so those that's kind of your goals really for the next three to five years yeah, is, we, yeah. could we have a performing arts center? And if so, uh, could that be regular improv, comedy, right. all so, kinds of different so things? So my vision in the Performing Arts Center would be to have like a Honeywell Center like they have up in Wabash Ooh, or yes. even a Paramount Theater in Anderson. Those are yeah. Wabash and Anderson. Those are similar sizes to Kokomo. And if they can maintain that, I think we can. I know for us, uh, for Curtain Call, it's, it's very challenging to get into Havens. Havens is one of the larger uh, performance venues in the Kokomo area. And it's it's hard to schedule. There's there's dance studios that go there. They have mm -hmm. outside groups. IU Kokomo's theater program starting to ramp up. Um, so it's great to have all these performing groups, but it's it's a challenge to try to find a place to perform. And school auditoriums where we used to used yeah. to do things, they're they're hopping too. Um, like Kokomo schools, they have they have very strong. They're starting to to build really strong theater programs within their middle school. Mm -hmm. I know Central Middle School, Maple Crest Middle School, they have some pretty strong theater programs that are starting to develop there. So that's great. Yes, great, it is. Great things in the performing arts world, but it would be great to also have a venue where we could bring in professional theater as well into our community and just really start uh oh start I, really bringing in people to the to the Kokomo community as well as having our community theater um and curtain call performing. In yeah, a we've got space. a lot of local. Um, mm -hmm. You think about the bands, you think mm -hmm. about um, yeah. singers and um, a comedy even. Um, yeah. it, it's pretty amazing. Um, I know that uh, Ryan Hall is now um, something uh, that's an available venue that he's oh, thinking. Yeah, over music. there on, yeah, the new. Yes. Yep. So that's something for us to definitely check out. Um, I know he's been hosting some nonprofits um, to do some yeah. uh, comedy shows. So that may be something to check out. Um, uh, who knows, you know, yeah. um, but the world is wide open to us. You're right. Yeah. And so uh, we got to take advantage of that mm -hmm. um, because our young people need that area. That's and right. I think about our uh, band students, you know, right. with the musical talent that they all have. But there is no indoor arena where we could put them together right. um, in kind of an orchestra fashion if we wanted to. Right, like even the the big uh, Howard County Music Festival that happens every March, you know, they're performing in gymnasiums, large gymnasiums that mm -hmm. probably are, they're probably starting to max out in that space too, as far as like the the performers plus then all the uh, spectators coming to see them. It's it's probably pretty tight. So yeah. If, you'd have, yeah. if you have like, you know, 
the County Wealth Center seats about 1,400 people. I so know. if you had something like that with a large stage with some professional lighting, and yeah. it would be it would be pretty significant. I so. think that is a very audacious goal, yeah. but I think it's accomplishable. Yeah, I think, I think we've got a lot of people here that would support something like that. Yeah. So. Well, kudos to you. Yeah, we're, we're just rocking and rolling. I think you are doing a wonderful <laughs> job. Thank you. Tell me again, when is the uh, curtain call going to be open and ready to purchase tickets? So you can go to kcctc.org, and usually about a month out from our show, we we put the ticket link up there for the different productions. So you have, like I said, we have a Christmas carol coming up December 7 through mm-hmm. 10. Okay. That'll be at the Curtain Call Studio, which is 2114 North Armstrong Street. And then March 15th and 16th is Finding Nemo Jr. at Havens Auditorium. And we might throw some things, some other things in there too, but those are the two big next two big shows on our on our calendar right now i thank Um, you very much for stopping by you've had quite a morning you've been almost every media we have today and so but thank you for joining the up and up podcast i appreciate you inviting me out you bet hey stay tuned we have kiddos coming back after this break the episode is funded by the community foundation of howard county Special thanks to the Hunt Family Fund, which was used to fund this grant. And now back to the Up and Up podcast. Welcome to the Up and Up podcast, where we are going to speak to one of our young folks and find out what's going on in the mind of our young today. So today, who do we have with us? Alicia Angel. Awesome. How old are you, Alicia? 23. 23. Awesome. And how do you like Kokomo Urban Outreach? It's good. Yeah. And what have you learned? To talk to people in the community. That is awesome. And what about the work that you go out and do? What do you like to do? Break leaves. Ooh, and we got leaf season coming up. We are actually doing leaf watch as we approach fall. We're seeing how many leaves are falling, right? And so people need to call and book their jobs now so we can get out there and really get raking. Um, I was going to say, what are some other things that you've learned at Kokomo Urban Outreach? Helping other kids do things. That's neat. So teaching other kids even, helping them out. That is pretty cool. The other thing I think about is, do you work at the Makerspace? Yes. What is the Makerspace? What do you do? We sell stuff. Okay. And do you make stuff? Yeah. Okay. What kind of things are you working on right now? Christmas. Oh, so Christmas Lee, or you know, your wreaths, your different items that are going on with Christmas. Yep. I'm excited to see what you guys are making. Yep. I heard that you just got a new machine. What is that? A sublimation printer. Oh, sublimation printer. Wow. So you're going to be able to do t shirts yep. and things like that? That's amazing. And last week you were at a fall festival and did you sell some items there? Yep. Wow, I think you made a couple hundred dollars, didn't you? You were talking up a storm. That was awesome. Well, I am so proud of you and all that you bring to the table. Alicia volunteers and helps us out with some of the mailings um, and different items. And so you've just been a very big help to us, haven't you? And we are so thankful um, that we are able to uh, take care of, you know, giving her incentive and making sure that everybody gets what they need, right? She's always concerned about people and making sure that they get what they need. Yep. We really appreciate you, Alicia, and all the volunteer duties that you take care of, okay? I want to say thank you to you. And so this, uh, is there anything else that you might like to share with the audience? Nope. Okay. And And I get to work extra. What's that? I get to work extra. You get to work extra? Oh, really? Is it because fall break? (gasps) Yeah. Yeah. Kareem. Oh, wow. And you love Kareem, don't you? You can't wait till he comes in. Oh, wow. He makes her exercise. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And you love it. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't love exercise, (laughs) but you do. You got to (laughs) share. Thanks for helping me. See, she's a helper. That's what she is. She keeps me on my toes. 
So, hey, I appreciate you joining the Up and Up podcast where we're interviewing the next generation and seeing what they're going to go on and do with their lives. Investing in the youth of tomorrow. Thank you for joining our Up and Up podcast. We'll see you next week.